put the money in the coat and for the bills. That's it. If you ain't getting my hair done, if you ain't getting my nails done, if you ain't doing nothing for me, then I don't need you here. It's not 50-50. It's not 80-20. It's 100% to zero. I've already spoken on this, but for someone who might be on the outside looking in because they're, you know, trying to figure out a uh, content strategy or they're trying to understand what the issue is on uh, TikTok with all of this back and forth about Passport Bros. I'd like to bring up the fact that I've already mentioned this a long time ago. The issue ultimately is um, in America, men in general are suffering from stages of grief. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross studied the uh, psychology of dying people, and she came up with the stages of grief. The initial stage is shock. The person is shocked to find out that they're dying. This may be examples like uh, perhaps you get told that you have cancer and you only got like seven months to live or something like that. Shock is always going to be the initial uh, reaction to this outside stimulus. Then after that, you have denial and you basically don't believe that this is happening to you. Oh Lord, why is this happening? And then you have anger where you immediately get anger and you're angry at everyone and you're kicking shit around, you're kicking your book bag, you're kicking your vacuum cleaner, you're, you're angry. After that, you know, some of these people, it, they get brought to their knees and they start bargaining. Oh Lord, why me? You don't have to take me, Lord. No, not me. And then after that, you've got depression because you realize, yeah, God ain't answering you. In fact, he says, yeah, buddy, it's time to come on home, whether you like it or not. And uh, people get depressed. And a lot of people who fall into depression, they fall into alcoholism, they fall into drug abuse, substance abuse, so forth and so on. Some people never make it past depression because some people, how should I say, uh, delete themselves, i.e. like Robin Williams and, um, you know, some people, you know, this happens regularly. Um, testing is a phase that was put in, but I believe they also refer to testing as, uh, trying to find solutions, but basically, you know, testing is when you're seeking a realistic solution. Um, I've heard other words there, but see, <clears throat> initially it was only five stages of grief. They started adding more in. Apparently somebody was anxious to write a book about this and they needed a, a hook or a gimmick. So they decided to start adding phases in. But anyway, the last phase is acceptance. Eventually you realize there's no way out of it and you have to accept what's coming. That's the last phase. So as I'm saying, American men, I've, I've continuously said this, American men are suffering from what's called anomie, A-N-O-M-I-E, which means that they do not feel a part of society. They feel that society has left them by the wayside. Black men, white men, I would say not so much for Hispanic men because Hispanic men in general, Hispanic men have a better relationship with their own women than white men and black men do. Liberal feminism has basically ruined this country because what they've done is they've essentially devalued and tried to destroy masculinity. They call it toxic masculinity. I have news for you. Masculinity is toxic. Men are toxic, if that's the word you want to use. You know what men are here for? Men are here to do the dangerous, difficult, and dirty jobs. If I was a fucking caveman, I'd be out hunting animals. You know what? My only job would be running out with a rock or a club and beating animals to death and skinning them and bringing their meat home so that we could cook their meat and eat their meat and I could grow my family by eating the meat of animals that I just beat to death. My other job would be beating other cavemen to death and beating the hell out of them with rocks and bricks and trying not to get beat down myself. That's my only job. My other job, well, besides providing security and besides providing uh, food, we used to say, bring home the bacon. They used to say man's job is to bring home the bacon. But you don't hear these things anymore. The media has screened it all out. You know, it's funny. I was watching this show, Velma, new series on HBO. The new Velma for Scooby-Doo is black. And on top of that, all of the men on the show are either simps or idiots. All of them. They're not smart anymore. In the old Scooby-Doo, 
uh, Fred and Shaggy and Scooby the dog, you know, they were smart, but not anymore. No, -uh, no, no. So they, they, they've attacked masculinity on every single level. They've done their best. They, they think that to bring women up means that you have to put men down. Men are suffering from anime, and in that anime, they are suffering from grief. Here's the problem, though. You can't have a strong society if you don't have strong men. The army has been complaining. You can look it up yourself. I'll even put the links down below. The army has been complaining that the recruits that they have now, their bones are weak, that they're undisciplined, that they're obese, overweight. They have poor nutrition. They're, they're literally complaining that their bones are too weak. There was a perfect quote in the third Batman movie, The Dark Knight Rises, by Bane. And Batman tried to throw a punch at Bane. Bane catches his hand. And he was like, peace has cost you your strength. No, in fact, I got to read it like Bane. Peace has cost you your strength. Victory has defeated you. Because what happened was Batman had made the streets so peaceful until at that point he didn't have to really work out and be Batman no more. He didn't have to fight as hard anymore. And he got so weak that eventually somebody like Bane was able to rise up and kick his ass. Because, see, Bane beat the shit out of Batman during that first part of the movie. If Bane wanted to, Batman would have been dead. But naturally, they couldn't write that in. See, the real Bane would have killed him right then and there. But peace, peace has cost you your strength. Victory has defeated you. And that's the reality. That's what America is. America is Batman being beat up by Bane. That's what it is. Bane is the rest of the world. America is Batman. Now, yeah, we've got all this technology. We've got rockets and fighters and this, that, and other. But you look at the F-35. The F-35 is fucking crashing every time they're trying to land the shit. It's a failed program. F-22, they were having problems with that fucking thing suffocating people every time they were flying. I mean, it's, it's disgusting. And granted, somebody would be like, oh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Well, then I'll call your attention to what's happening over there right now, Ukraine versus Russia. Them Russians ain't playing. They blowing shit up. And they doing it. And they going to keep doing it. And you can keep fighting, but you, you're losing. You know, you're losing ground. Peace has cost you your strength. Victory has defeated you. We made this world so civilized that at this point, the women have basically devalued the men. So the men that have been devalued are suffering from grief and they're suffering from enemy. They are angry. You're noticing that these school shooters are getting younger and younger and younger. There was just a story. You can look it up yourself, but there was just a story. Six-year-old, I believe it was Virginia, shot his teacher. You've seen enough of the, uh, uh, the, these young males who uh, you call them incels. They're not getting sex or this, that, and all that. You call them incels. You're making fun of them and everything. They come back to that school guns blazing. They come back to their church or your church. You know, and you're wondering, why is it that these males are getting so much younger and anger? Where's all this anger coming from? It used to be the good old days where you could just blame hip hop or you could blame Marilyn Manson. You could blame rap, rock music, rap music, hip hop. Uh, you could, it used to be the good old days. You used to be able to blame music. You used to be able to say, oh, yeah, well, they're like that because they saw Sub-Zero do a fatality in Mortal Kombat. It's the video games. Nah, no, 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 no. Nope. You, as a society, devalue masculinity, and what you've got is ticking time bombs, running around, angry. They have access to high-powered weaponry, but what they don't have is the restraint or the responsibility. They, it's like they're in Jurassic Park, what did he say? He says, you're wielding your power with the same irresponsibility of a child wielding his father's gun. It's like, y'all don't... See, the sad thing is, these movies taught us all this shit. These movies, I don't think they saw what was happening now coming. It's just that they warned about it. And the sad thing is, even if you wanted to say the movies shouldn't be taken seriously, 
The books that we had warned us about this. All of the books, 1984. All the books warned us about this shit. They warned us about fascism. They warned us about what could happen. They warned us, but y'all didn't listen. Either that or you didn't see it. A lot of these movies, they refuse to show anymore because they don't want you taking away lessons from it that they don't want you learning. But I'm not going to get too far away from the point. The issue is some of these men are still in denial phase and they can't understand what's going on. So those, some of them go on uh, you know, psychotropic drugs and this, that, and other. Some of them are angry and they're lashing out violently. Some of them are at the bargaining phase and they're trying to figure out ways to work things out to no avail. Some of them are suffering from tremendous amounts of depression and you keep seeing that happening. You keep seeing these self-deletions. That's the, that's the uh, YouTube friendly or code or whatever you want to call it. That's one way we say it. And then a lot of them are walking around in the acceptance phase where they've accepted what's going on and they're trying to just get on with their life. Now, I would say that the testing phase, technically, passport bros, we are the answer. We are the answer. See, the sad thing is these men, these young men are looking for answers. And if there is an absence of answers, these poor young men, it's like they don't know where to turn. So some of them go out during the anger of the depression phase. Passport bros are telling you, listen, get your $200 together, get yourself a passport, build yourself up, make yourself wealthy, get yourself a career. You can fly overseas. You can meet somebody who will show you what true romance, marriage, and a family would be like outside of America. Because America is not going to do it for you. America has put these women through capitalism, America has put these women in direct competition, direct competition with men. And because they're in direct competition with men, they're not trying to work with you. They're literally trying to take what you have, literally. Or they're just trying to have more than you. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, that's capitalism. It's competition. And competition, for the most part, creates more opportunity and it creates a, how should I say, a stronger end product. It's part of Darwinism, in fact, survival of the fittest. Those who aren't fit would be selected out and those who are fit will continue. But the issue that we're having is in a short period of time, most people ain't got time for that. They're not, they're not trying to hear it. So the issue basically comes down to, are your needs being met? Are your psychological, spiritual, and physical needs? needs being met. That's what this all comes down to. At that point, let's take a look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In my biology class, one of the earliest things we're taught is how to look for signs of life. Supposedly, things that are alive should breathe, have some level of excretion. They obviously are going to need food and water and one of their needs is most likely going to be reproduction. And there are other needs such as homeostasis, which means that they're balancing their intake with their output. Maslow came up with what's called the hierarchy of needs. So I don't know if you've ever learned about this. So I'm just going to bring it up really quick because as we were having a great conversation on Pablo Frescobar's channel about the hierarchy of needs. So... As you can see, the physiological needs are breathing, food, water, sex, sleep, homeostasis, which means balancing the body's intake and output. And then there's excretion, which is basically getting rid of waste. If you're taking in air, food, and water, then you have to have some level of waste. And these are the main things that they look for when they're talking about living things. Then there's safety. For men, safety you know, sometimes that can be an issue. Sometimes you can live in an unsafe environment. Sometimes you could be growing up in an unsafe environment. But basically, safety is security of the body, of employment, and that's extremely important. We live in a time where a corporation can say, you know what? Our stock dropped $2. We're going to lay off 15,000 people. Ask Tesla. Ask Twitter. Ask uh, Facebook. Ask YouTube. Ask Google. 
Yeah, that happens. If you don't have security of employment, how about if you're an American man who works in a factory and all of a sudden your factory says, yeah, we're packing up, we're moving to China or or we're moving to Mexico. So we used to make Hellcat superchargers, but you know what? We're going to take that factory. We're going to move it to Mexico. So we'll make the cars in Canada and we'll make the superchargers in Mexico. Well, what about me? You know what we're leaving you with? Guess what? You here in Flint, Michigan, you know what we're going to leave you with? We're going to leave you with water that has fucking lead in it. But what we're going to do is we're going to take $70 billion. We're going to send it over to Ukraine. Think about that for a second. Resources, morality. Do you have a church? Of the family. Men need safety for their families. Men need health safety. Uh, you, you're seeing men dropping dead, healthy men dropping dead in the middle of football games, basketball games, uh, uh, boxing matches. Um, uh, you're seeing it. You're hearing more and more about it. You're seeing it on live television. It can't be ignored anymore. How about that? Anybody got something to say about that? Property. Got to keep my property safe. Well, here's a question. How are you going to keep your property safe? Can you keep your pro Can you guarantee your property safety? I guarantee my property safety with my baby right here. Anybody know what my baby is? Anybody know about my baby? My baby helped keep my property safe. My baby right here. My baby. So anyway, you got to keep your property safe. Then you move up to love and belonging. You need friendship of some type. Otherwise, you go crazy because if you have no friends, you got nobody to talk to. Family. If you don't have a lot of friends, family is the next best thing. You call up your brother. You call up your cousin, your sister, your, your uh, auntie, your uncle. Sexual intimacy. You need to have somebody that, uh, you know, you talk to after busting a nut, basically. Okay, and esteem. Self-esteem is important. Confidence is important. Achievement, respect of others, respect by others, because without those things, it's like you're going to be basically at war from the moment that you wake up in the morning to the time you put your head down to sleep. If, you, if, you, if you're fighting with people, or people are choosing to pick on you because they don't like you or whatever, or somebody's trying to steal from you, this, that, and other, that's not good at all. And then last is self-actualization, morality, creativity, spontaneity. So basically what they're saying is men have to have an opportunity and they have to have an output to express their intelligence. They have to have a, the, the output to be able to solve problems, to be able to express their ideas, create music. Create art, self-expression. That's that's basically one of the reasons why the First Amendment is so important. You need to be able to express yourself. It, it, you know, if you can't dress the way you want to dress, or you can't uh, speak in public, or if you can't, you know, share uh, ideas, self-actualization. So individual people have to have these things. If you are missing out on these things. Chances are you're going to be unbalanced. Men are suffering from grief, especially grief over women and their position in society. And the reality is women, they've said this numerous times, they say, yeah, women control access to sex. Passport bros understand right away that that's not true completely. You mean these women here control access to their sex. <laughs> uh if you're looking for a wife and you're looking for these portions of this hierarchy of need, uh, sex and uh, what is it called? Sexual intimacy and a family. You want to have a family? You get your passport, $200 with shipping and handling, and you be on the next plane out of here. And you can get all of these things. And you can have these, you can meet somebody who gives you all of these things. Because that's the beautiful thing about being a man. We figured all of this stuff out a long time ago. And the reality is, um, whether you choose to be with somebody here or you choose to be with somebody abroad, you know, there is no excuse to be an incel at this point. There's no excuse. You think about it. What what When you say incel, usually the idea that comes up in your mind is somebody sitting in their parents' basement playing PlayStation 5 or Xbox, Right thing about it is a PlayStation 5 or Xbox is like $500. For half that money, they could have gotten a passport. 
And if they save up and get their career together for about what? $1,000, maybe even $2,000, they get a round trip ticket out of this country. They could stay in another country for a whole month, especially if it's one of those lesser, uh, you know, a company, a country with like a low uh, economy. And they meet somebody and be like, yeah, I'm in love. I'm going to marry uh, Consuela. I'm going to marry Consuela and, I'm a, and I, we're going to have a family. You know, it's like there's no, there. to tell you the truth, there's no excuse to be an incel at this point. If you're an incel at this point, you must just not want to try. I mean, at this point, you ain't even got to really try. But here's the thing. When you're surrounded by a society that is telling you that you're not that important or you're, you're in a society that shows you that it doesn't value family and that men can be cast aside, but they, now see, they cast the man aside, but they still want access to your wallet. Even if you don't have children, they want that palimony. They want that alimony. They want that, that common law that says, yeah, if somebody live with you long enough, you're going to have to uh, 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 pay them out of your property. That's all fucking bullshit. And that's only something that could have come up with this liberal, uh, this socialist insanity that's going on. But Passport Bros came up with an answer. And the answer is the same thing that they told you in the movie War Games. It says the only way to win is not to play. I'm taking my chips and I'm leaving. I'm not playing. So now you see all these angry strags online and they coming after you. Oh, yeah, well, you know, when are you, when, yeah, you, you, you know, you, you just, you can't handle the strong women and, and, and you can't handle strong independent women and, and, and you weak and, and you got a small member on you. That's why you can't handle these 300 pound body positive lizzos. That's what they say. They literally say this stuff. They say it. Oh, yeah, the reason why you can't handle body positivity is because you're small down there. Your nine inches ain't enough. Your ten inches ain't enough. If you were a bigger man, you could handle little. I'm like, are do you hear what you're saying? <laughs> they say this shit. That, uh, you know what Filipinas, P, Filipina P says? Ah, uh, yes. When you're failing in an argument and you're losing, the best thing to do is attack a man's junk. What do they do if they're not attacking your junk? They're attacking your wallet. Oh, you ain't got no money. Oh, you why are you calling me a gold digger? If I was digging for gold, I sure didn't find none. I didn't find no gold. You ain't got no gold. What where your gold? You ain't got no gold. You 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 ain't got enough in your wallet. You ain't got no gold. If it's not that, it's probably your height. Now, fortunately, I'm six foot six, so I ain't got to worry about that. So my thing to you is you don't have to worry about white supremacy. You got to worry about height supremacy. Oh, no, you're not tall enough. It's like I only date men that is 6'2 or higher. You just 5'11". I can't date you. I'm not dating you. You too short. So... You get my point. You get my point. And, and that's the sad reality about it. And, and it's funny because when you watch TikTok, I don't understand how so many women who are so undesirable were able to jump up and criticize so many men from so many backgrounds. I, I, I don't, I, I honestly, I can't figure that one out for myself. I'm like, lady, did you look in the mirror? It's like, you're criticizing a man who's got more than you and has more opportunity globally. What do you have? You know, I, I love going on these forums and arguing with them because it's, it's slapping them down. It's fun. You know, it, it's like, who are you arguing with? It's like, yeah, there's a reason why you ain't got nothing. There's a reason why your finger ain't got no ring on it. Your ring finger on your left hand. There's a reason why I ain't got no ring on it. And you're criticizing men who are doing well for themselves in legal, earning, high-earning jobs. They're upwardly mobile. You're criticizing these men? Filipina P started a fire when she put that video together. And it's funny because 
before her, these foreign women, they weren't able to easily speak back. And in most of these foreign women, you know, they're not paying much attention to what's going on here. But a lot of them either weren't paying attention or they couldn't speak English. They couldn't respond. But when she responded, she absolutely killed it. Killed it. And here you are. You got a 31-year-old, pretty, cute woman telling you about yourself. Oh, they went ballistic after that. They went absolutely ballistic. But bottom line is, not to get so far away from the subject, men have a hierarchy of needs. One way or another, those needs have to be met. Because if you let these men collapse and fall down, your entire society is going to fall down. Because all those dangerous, difficult, dirty jobs that no one else can do since there's only women and they can't do them. And they, the reality is they can't do them. That's the, that's the, the reality. It's funny, women are very quick to bring up uh, male strength. Oh, yeah, well, they've got bigger deltoids, bigger abdominals, and they're able to lift twice as much and three times as much. They're able to run further and this stuff. Yeah, well, guess what? That's the reason why men were able to build a society like this. You know, that's just what it is. Now, that's not to say that you can't help. Yeah, I'm sure there's a job for you on a computer somewhere crunching numbers and uh, sending men to the moon or something like that or or, or uh, hidden figures. Yeah, listen, there's always room for anybody's brain to do some work. But when it comes to building that shit in physical world, <laughs> well, we already know the truth. We already know the truth. That's the reality. We know we, we already know what it is. So. As far as this hierarchy of needs, guys, it's like you're probably missing out on something and you're probably looking for answers. You need to make sure you fill in your triangle. And in order for you to fill in your triangle, you may have to make some moves that you never expected yourself to make before. And that's just that. So whether it's getting your passport, which is probably the smartest thing you could do. The other option is you could be a cleanup bro. There's lots of cleanup bros. The women love cleanup bros. They love having a plan B. They have 101 demands and requirements out of you. Oh, before you come around my children, oh, let's just get a couple things straight. I'm not interested in men who have baby mamas out there coming around me and my children because I don't want no baby mama drama. So they have requirements for you. But apparently the cleanup bros have no requirements for these women. So the reality is um, there's different ways to fulfill this. The cleanup bro route is one that I really don't recommend. But there are other opportunities. There are other opportunities like um, between being a passport bro and a cleanup bro. Some of you may very well be lucky enough to meet somebody right here in this country who's not poisoned by this country's toxic culture or its toxic environment. So some of you may very well be that lucky. Most of you probably won't. And then even if you could, a lot of you probably wouldn't want to marry here simply because if things turn to the worst and go wrong and you get a divorce, you know, let, let's say maybe your wife is a cop and she cheats on you with a bunch of other cops, it's like, chances are, it's like you might not want to stay married, and if you get divorced, the fear of getting divorced, you know, it might make it so that you don't want to end up divorced, losing half of your shit to the laws in this country, or losing custody of your kids. So men have a lot to worry about. And I, and I would say this whole thing about the no-fault divorce this whole thing about the fear of uh, marriage and the fear of divorce and everything, that right there is part of the reason why a lot of men ain't marrying. And, 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 I, and I will say this, women have the same hierarchy of needs as men do. They can achieve just about everything on here, but when it comes to family, having a husband, having a family, a lot of them can't achieve that part because ain't nobody trying to marry them. And not only that, most of them will not be able to achieve that for one very simple reason. There are more men, I'm sorry, there's more women than there are men. And that's that's a, that's going to be like a simple mathematics issue. It's, it's, sociology teaches you that there will always be more men married in general than there will be women. 
Because for every married man, you're going to have multiple unmarried women. Women outnumber men. You, you know, ancient civilization was polygamous. Polygamy is when you have um, marriage with multiple partners. Polyandry is marriage of a woman to multiple men. What we're being forced to deal with right now is basically polyandry. The women are like, oh yeah, well, if I can't get what I want out of you, I'll have multiple boyfriends. Or I'll have mo Even though it's not sanctioned by marriage, they'll get their needs met one way or another, even if they have to play a dozen simps, even if they have to have only fans and they have to have a hundred men sending them money to keep their rent paid, they'll do it. But you're being forced to share. You're being forced to accept polyandry. Meanwhile, men are not allowed to have polygyny. They're not allowed to marry multiple women. That's, that's illegal. Now, because it's outside of marriage, you can have multiple girlfriends, but that doesn't really work out very well. And uh, the reality is, God forbid, one or two of them gets pregnant. <laughs> that absolutely doesn't work out very well for you or your wallet. It's actually better to kind of be monogamous. So you got to worry. Some of these dating coaches who you hear talking about eating booty and, and being in open relationships, be careful of these people because these people don't know what they're talking about. These people are in cuckold relationships and they are being used. They think that they're fulfilling their triangle. They think that they're getting all their needs met. But these men are literally being cuck held. These men are being used and the woman who's using them is using other men too. So they might as well be living in Paw Paw New Guinea, you know, for, where, where polyandry is a thing. They might as well be living there. But these poor men have psychologically anesthetized themselves and they think that this is okay. It's not. Well, and maybe it's, a, hey, listen, maybe what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Maybe they, may, hey, listen, if they like it, who am I to tell them that they can't be cucks? Who am I to tell them that they can't be simps, right? I, I'm not supposed to tell them that. I'm not supposed to tell you you're not supposed to be a simp, right? Hey, if you like being a simp, I guess, hey, that's just what you do. I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to do that, though. But uh, if you want to eat booty and you're not worried about high body count, which is from your own words, then, hey, listen, I ain't got nothing to say. But if that's how you're fulfilling your triangle, good luck to you because that's going to collapse eventually and it's not going to be a pretty thing. So yeah, that's all I really had to talk about. Men are suffering from anime and grief and they are not getting their hierarchy of needs met. So the question is, what are you going to do to change that? How are you going to get your hierarchy of needs met? Are you going to stay here and accept the sloppy seconds or are you going to get your passport and go to greener pastures. Imagine you're God. You're building people all day. You're going to end up going, you know what? Let me make a really cool one. I mean, you make the peons and the peasants. And then you're like, you know, let me just make, let's make a real badass. Just to see what happens. I'm God's favorite. So I know you're looking at me thinking, I'm working my job and my life's shit.